Hi there. My name is Bree Glenn. I am a um, physician here at Maine General. I'm a third year uh, family medicine resident, I'm about to finish my training here. I am also a doctor of osteopathy, uh, and I'm going to be chatting with you all a little bit today about what exactly that means. Uh, my goal for today is to talk with you about what is OMM, uh, which is a therapy that osteopaths are able, able to offer their patients. I'm hoping to provide some uh, information and background on what exactly that is, how it can help, and where you might be able to find it in your community. There are two bodies of medicine in this country. There are MDs and there are DOs. We all learn the same things. We all learn the same medical knowledge. However, doctors of osteopathy learn under a different set of principles, um, specifically the osteopathic principles. So these four principles are the body is a unit, the body possesses self-healing mechanisms, structure and function are reciprocally interrelated, and treatment um, is based on the understanding that structure dictates function. Having these different principles in, the, in basic medical education allows osteopaths to see humans potentially in a different light seeing them as a whole person, understanding that, yes, they're walking in with these diagnoses. However, these diagnoses may be because, you know, their socioeconomic status or stressors in their life that led them to where they are, or, you know, they have something caught up in their membranes of their body and they haven't had it treated yet in the way that has opened up healing. So how we're able to do that is we're able to feel the structures of the body. There are many different structures, right? I'm just gonna go through a cursory um, layer review just so we can all be on the same page. So when we think about our body, like right now I'm touching my shirt, okay? Underneath that is skin. Underneath that is some um, subcutaneous fat. And then we have our muscles and our fascia. And then we have our bones and our nerves. So what fascia is, is that is, it's a very dense connective tissue. Uh, I like to explain it as if you can imagine for a second, 1000 layers of saran wrap piled on top of each other and then smushed into the thinness of one. And then taking that and wrapping up our whole body in that. And that's what fascia is and represents. It's, essentially the membranes that keep us all together. If you are a meat eater, you have seen fascia, eaten fascia. It's the thin uh, membrane if you've ever eaten ribs that you peel off the back, that is fascia. Um, and being this dense connective tissue that is connected everywhere, you can imagine that if you have a spot that is tighter in one area, it may affect how you're feeling in the rest of your body. For example, the fascia at the base of our back is called the thoracolumbar fascia. Big words, basically what it is, it's the fascia at the bottom of our spine. And many different structures connect into that, including muscles, including um, ligaments, nerves pass through that. Um, not only the muscles of our leg and our glutes, but also our back and our ab muscles attached to that. So you can imagine if you have tightness in your legs, you might feel low back pain because your hamstrings and your glutes are pulling tightly on that fascia and you're feeling the pain in your low back. Um, so fascia is um, diffuse and it's everywhere. And also it can be a troublemaker because you might be feeling pain in an area um, that's loud and it's talking to you and it's like, I'm in pain, uh, but the the pain source is not necessarily right where that you're feeling that pain. Thinking about the layers, we put our hands on our patients and we feel what their system has to tell us, whether it's my fascia is really tight here or this muscle is really tight and needs to have some help getting loose again. Um, or, you know, we like sometimes people's hips are rotated in a different way. Uh, so we put our hands, feel what we feel, feel what the system has to tell us, 
and then use our different modalities of treatment to try and get the body back to a happier state of neutral. So there are different ways that we can do that. Um, there are some modalities that are direct in their treatment, meaning they go right for the dysfunction, right for the um, piece of anatomy that is not necessarily in its happiest state of neutral. There are also modalities that work around those structures and try and neutralize areas around it to facilitate that structure relaxing, and those are more indirect. Or um, sometimes they take the structure away from the dysfunction. For example, if your hip is rotated forward, sometimes some treatments will focus on the leg or your sacrum, um, which is the bone at the bottom of your spine, and try and treat those areas to see if it will help your hip become rotated in a better way. If you are seeking out OMM as a therapy, I would think of, I empower you to think about what treatments you think may work for you and what may not. For example, I do not crack any of my patients intentionally in my treatments. I'm more of an indirect gal. I prefer to um, lean more on the side of my patient might not necessarily feel that I'm doing anything in that moment, um, but they will feel it a couple days after. And that's also not uncommon because our body takes it some time to, like I said, integrate that conversation into its knowing and figure it out. So it's not uncommon for patients to be sore the next few days. You should not be more sore than you came to the appointment as. Um, and um, there's no evidence to say that hydrating a little extra helps that soreness, but I think it makes sense. You know, if you're hydrating a little extra that day after your treatment, you're helping your body flush out any of the stuff that was shaken up with that treatment. OMM can treat the whole body, and we can also treat the nervous system with OMM. So it's possible that, you know, you can experience relaxation, decrease in anxiety, um, potentially better sleep because your body is moving in a way that it's intended to. Uh, I think that we as humans carry a lot on us, literally and figuratively. First of all, the weight of gravity is very heavy and it's not, it's something that our body has to get used to as we go throughout our lives. Um, we carry with us things that have happened, right? Whether it be emotional insults, um, mental insults, or physical insults. So if, if you get into a car accident or a big fall or break a bone, our membranes remember that and they hold on to that. And as we get into adulthood, it's actually very hard to reroute our body's nervous system to say, hey, remember when we weren't like that? Remember when we weren't holding on to this, you know, car accident or this concussion? Um, so it's possible that uh, you're able to, you know, feel more at ease and more in line with your own energy after an OMM treatment. That's what I have to say about OMM uh, today. I um, hope that you have learned a little bit of something um, and I look forward to answering any questions or uh, fielding any comments. My name is Brianna Glynn. I am a DO. Um, I intend to practice osteopathy uh, for the remainder of my career. Um, and I think probably as you can tell, I'm quite passionate about it. Uh, so yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to listen and learn with me. And I look forward to next time.